What do you think, Nation? Will the Patriots trade the number three overall pick? Give me a yes. Give me a no. Coming up here on the Raiders Report, I'm going to convince you that the New England Patriots will 100% be trading their number three pick during the 2024 NFL Draft. Coming up here on the Raiders Report, I'm Mitchell Renz, host of this show. There is a lot of smoke, and I mean, <laughs> a lot of smoke around the Patriots trading out of the number three pick. And if you haven't seen the latest going on around the New England Patriots, around the Las Vegas Raiders, around the NFL Draft, don't worry, you are in the right place. So according to Ari Mayeroff on Twitter, he says, Patriots executive Elliot Wolf says, they are open for business with the number three overall pick and every pick they have in the draft. Wolf admits they have holes to fill on the roster and believes the more picks, listen to this, the more picks we have, the better. But he also indicates they're comfortable sticking at number three if that's the best option based on the offers they receive. Also, Ian Rappaport decided to chime in and said, Patriots de facto GM Elliot Wolf told reporters today he'd be open to trade out at number three. We're open to the first round or any round. If the answer is picking one of the top four quarterbacks at number three, I think we'd be comfortable with it. The reason why I really wanted to show you this part right here is this, because if they're talking about the idea of getting more picks because, well, they're open to it slash like that's what they think is better off. If you're not 100% sold on the idea of taking a quarterback number three, you shouldn't take a quarterback at number three. You should trade back and acquire more picks. The fact that they say, I think we'd be comfortable with it. If I were to, if you were to ask me any question, I'd be like, I think we'd be comfortable with it. If you were to give me that response, I'd be like, you're not confident in this at whatsoever. It's almost like when Alex asked me, yeah, Jeremy goes, will you marry me? I think I'd be comfortable with it. You're marrying that quarterback that you pick at number three. This is a marriage. I think we'd be comfortable with it. It's not a very confident answer that you're taking a guy at number three. So coming up here on the Raiders report, the Patriots trading back from number three timeline because I know people that watch the show a lot and I always say if you subscribe to the idea, if you're like me where, where there is a lot of smoke, I do usually think there's fire and this is not the first time that the Patriots have come out with a story, a report of very, very important people that make these type of decisions and again, as Rappaport said, the de facto GM said that. Well, if only the head coach also said it in Gerard Mayo. Oh wait, we'll get to that here in just a second. If you're not already subscribed to the Raiders Sport, please join our family. And if you ever need to ask another Raider fan, go on our live show. Go down in the comments. Ask them, why should I subscribe to the show? Not only is it free, but we're building something here more than just a YouTube channel. So shout out to Ty Thomas. Shout out to Vern Dramlin, And then Raider Jake 69 Y'all are part of the Noti Gang, which means you're subscribed. You turn on those notifications. And you take pride on commenting right when I drop a video. If you want to see your name here on the show... Join the Noti gang and subscribe. So coming up here, the Patriots trading back from the number three timeline. Yes, we have gotten all these recent updates from April 18th from Ari, Ari Maroff, from a guy like Ian Rappaport, two people that are extremely well connected in the NFL. On top of that, it's literally from the horse's mouth. The horse's mouth is the New England Patriots. So when you see Patriots executives saying that New England is open up for business, that is a green light of already them saying, yeah, I'm open to this idea. Like, one of the things that the Chicago Bears have done a good job is they're like, we're going to take Caleb Williams at number one overall, right? The Commanders, their GM came out and said on the 18th that they're going to be taking somebody at pick number two. New England hasn't done that. And when you're taking a quarterback at number three and they're, you have a chance to acquire all these picks here, you're literally getting into a marriage. You don't go into a marriage being like, well... She's also pretty good looking. Well, he's also pretty good looking too. It's not quite how it goes. Elliot Wolf, again, the de facto GM says, the more picks we have, the better. For you to say that a week before the NFL draft is the definition of fishing. You don't say that if you're very contempt with the idea of you got a quarterback in mind. You say something like this because you said he thinks they'd be okay with the idea of taking a quarterback here at number three. 
If you're not 100% confident, you throw out a statement like this in the hopes of that you're open for business, that a deal gets done. You add all of those things up. And again, I know that different NFL teams work in different ways. But when you get a GM saying this, and then you also get your brand new head coach, a guy that is taking over for Bill Belichick, and they're thinking the exact same way, Call me crazy, but if both are open for business, if both think more picks is the way to go, then I'm going to say it. I think there is a 100% chance that the New England Patriots are going to trade the number three overall pick during the 2024 NFL Draft because if you haven't seen what Gerard Mayo said, this was to a Patriots fan all the way back in March. And I say all the way back in March, it's not that long ago, but this is what Mayo said. I understand the frustration and expectations built over the last 20 years, but we're trying to build build this the right way for the long term. So Mayo just comes out and already says, that, hey, like we're trying to do this the right way. We want to be able to build this for long term. If you're trying to build this for the long term, maybe the way to do it is to acquire more picks. More here from Gerard Mayo. And this is at the NFL owners meeting. I know everyone likes to think they have the special formula to picking players, but honestly, the guaranteed way to win is to accumulate more picks. So if we don't feel convicted, at number three, we are willing to trade back as well. So that is yet again another proof of this has been a common discussion with the New England Patriots, not just for a week, not just for a few weeks. We're talking about more than like a month, more than six weeks at this current point with this regime. They are saying things because in my personal opinion, they don't know what quarterback they want. And because they don't know who they want, they're not ready to get married to that quarterback. And because of that, they are fishing now for more picks. So with all of these stories coming out, I got three wild trade ideas with the New England Patriots. And I've made shows like this before. Also, Sims wants to bang. Shout out to Sims. We'll do it here after this segment. But coming up here, three wild trades with the New England Patriots. Also a place that gets wild. Price Picks. Shout out to our sponsor today. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and make sure that you use code CLNS for a first time deposit match up to $100. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1000 with NBA, NHL, and MLB entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Price picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals, easy game playing, and an enormous selection of players and stat types will make Price picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Price picks is simple. All you got to do is pick more. All you got to do is pick less. And if you want to check out some of my picks, this is for the season long. And I like this because sometimes when you're watching a game or you're watching whatever, you learn really quick that your picks aren't going to work. This is going to be something that happens the entire year and low key. I am going to be rooting for Bryce Young to have more passing touchdowns than 18 and a half. I am going to be rooting for C.J. Stroud to have more than 26 and a half passing touchdowns. And you're damn right I'm going to be rooting for Chris Jones to have less than 11.75 sacks. If you want to ride with me on this one, here you go. Link down in the comments, down in the description. It's prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Get started now if you haven't already at prizepicks.com slash CLNS and get a first-time deposit match of $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Shout out to Prize Picks for sponsoring the Raiders Report. All right, y'all. Who's ready to get a little bit wild here on today's show? I got three trade ideas that people are going to talk about. One, because if there's one thing that people love to talk about, it is trades, no doubt about it. But I also know there's a lot of people that are watching the show going like, well, Mitch, Jaden Daniels isn't going to fall to the New England Patriots at three. And you said on the show that the only way the Raiders are trading up to three is if Jaden's there. I know what I said. And I think Jaden is going to be there at pick number three. Caleb Williams going off the board number one. Then in the last 24 to 48 hours, there's been a lot of rumors that Jaden and his agent don't want him to go to Washington. You add that on top of all the other rumors out there that have happened of with Jaden potentially not getting along with GM Adam Peters. Then Adam, NFL draft expert, Daniel Jeremiah, who's really, really well connected and very, very good friends with Adam Peters, is predicting that Jaden doesn't go to Washington, but instead that they end up taking Drake May. If Jaden Daniels is on the board at three, I'm not saying that New England doesn't like him. I am saying that I don't think that they're 100% sold on that idea. I am very confident that Antonio Pierce is 100% sold on that idea. The real question is, 
Will Tom Telesco pulled the trigger? You know what, though? On this show, Chugs and I, we get to pull the trigger. We get to make the trades happen. So I got trade ideas around ideas that I would do that are also slash what I think it would cost for the Raiders to move up and go get their guy. Now, some of these deals are going to be like, well, that's a lot. Remember, the San Francisco 49ers go from 12 to 3, had to give up three first-round picks. That was for Trey Lance. Ended up being a bust. Dana Daniels to me with the Raiders isn't going to be a bust. Let's go to trade idea number one. You get The Raiders get a first-round pick. You also get Kayshawn Booty, a wide receiver that is buried on the New England Patriots roster and also former teammate of, guess who, Jaden Daniels. The New England Patriots, they get a first and second round pick, so 13 and 44 for this year. You also get a first and a fifth round pick in 2025, and on top of that, another first round pick in 2026. So the way that I would look at this is as follows. Essentially, all the picks minus that fifth rounder is for Kayshawn Booty. And I think if New England was able to get a fifth round pick for Kayshawn Booty, they would do jumping jacks, backflips, and even more than that. But again, these are deals that I would do. I am a believer that the Raiders are a quarterback away. They are a Jaden Daniels away. When I say quarterback, I mean they are a Jaden Daniels QB away from being a Super Bowl contender. If you believe that defenses win championships, I believe that the Raiders have a top five defense. Do you agree with that statement? Let me know. I also know that this team won eight games with all the bullshit they had going on last year. I know it is a lot, and I know it's a lot to give up for a guy that you've only seen in college. But I'm doing it because I'm that confident that him and Antonio Pierce are going to work with this team and that we go from being a fringe playoff team to a legit Super Bowl contender and a team that gives Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs a run for their money, which is something that all of us want at the end of the day. Two more trades coming up here, but I do want to tell people that I want you to join the Friend Zone, which is every Wednesday. It is going to be a Zoom call at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm only allowing 15 people max in. And if you didn't see my Zoom call from earlier Wednesday, well, I do want to give a special shout out to everybody that decided to tune in and join in. Now, the reason why this has to go through Venmo is because once you send me a Venmo and you send me, you know, that information, I'm then able to just send you an email. It's the easiest way to be able to communicate. It's the easiest way to know that you're not going to miss this call. So the way that we're going to do it is this. The first five people to bang on Venmo, you're in. Then to the five people that bang, these five free entries are going to be based on those five people that bang. You're going to spam their name in the comments, and then we're going to give those free entries away. It's also going to be based on five people that basically come in last place of a duck race. So I want people to participate. I want people to get more interactive in this show, and these ways are going to be able to do it. I will admit, if we fill this up, 15 people, and somebody goes, Mitch, I still want to join, if you rip that gong, you also are in. Remember, Venmo at Mitchell Renz 365. Let's go to trade idea number two. Trade idea number two is the Raiders just get the number three overall pick, and instead of giving up three first rounders, because there is a chance that if I'm the Patriots, I don't want three first rounders. If I'm New England, I'd rather have this deal where you're giving up your first three picks this year and your first three picks next season. Like, out of all the deals I'm going to show you, this is probably my least favorite deal because. Yeah, it's one less first rounder, but you're taking away major, major draft capital from Tom Telesco, from Antonio Pierce, just to go get your guy. It's a lot. However, though, would you do it if this means you don't have to give up that other first round pick in 2026? The final trade idea, and this is one where I get to let my hair down a little bit. You're going to be giving up your pick 13 and 44. You're also giving up a first round pick in 2025. And you're moving on from Byron Young, Asta La Vista, and Tyree Wilson. You are going to be taking a dead cap hit by moving on from Wilson. But the reason why these two players are tied in here is because they're McDaniels guys. They're Dave Ziegler guys. You know who's probably a team that does value McDaniels and Ziegler's opinion? It's probably the New England Patriots. Maybe they're willing to take one of these two players, take both of these guys in a deal. If it helps the Raiders to move up out of all the deals I just showed you, this is by far my favorite deal. I am hoping that Tyree Wilson turns into a good player. And Chugs and I have said it. He's going to have a much better year this season. Book it. Telling you right now. Byron Young, that's somebody that I don't really believe in. So out of all the trades that I just showed you, which one is your favorite? And for people that watch this show a lot, I'll tell you this right now. I, uh, I try to make different trades all the time. 
So that's that way, like it's not always stale what I showed you. And I've made trades in New England. It's probably my 50th trade this offseason. So bear with me and my creativity while I'm trying to get you guys more deals. So whatever trade is your favorite, whether it's one, two, or three, let me know down in the comments. And if you want me to interact with you on social media, from what I've learned, if you take a screenshot of one of my tweets and if you tag Chugs or I, that shit might just go viral. Seriously, though, shout out to everybody that always gives me a follow on Instagram, Twitter, for people that interact with me over there. It's greatly appreciated. Like, even the people that interact with Chugs, at Jeremy Chugs, which this is a very important one because I was in a meeting the other day with my two bosses. Jeremy comes into the studio, giggity, and he's got David Zahn and Navman on the phone, and that connection was made through social media because Navman, I'm pretty sure he was born in the, he was born in like the 20s, nah, man. He's, he's an old man. He couldn't figure out how to get the Zoom information. Luckily, social media saved the day. All right, y'all. Appreciate all you guys for tuning in. Again, it is a little bit of a far-fetched idea that the Raiders have that potential to trade up. But until that fat lady starts singing, I am going to hold out faith that the Raiders are going to lay in Jaden Daniels and become that Super Bowl caliber team.